The iPad has completely changed the game for so many designers, artists, and people out there. But there are so many apps you can use to do the same thing. And because I've been using the iPad for such a long time, I thought, you know what, it'll be cool to actually show you the apps that I use, the best ones, the reasons why I use some over others. So here we go. If these types of videos help you in any way, or if you just appreciate them, then please subscribe down below. It helps the channel out. Let's get Procreate out of the way. I don't mean to sound like a hipster, but I have been using Procreate even before the Apple Pencil was a thing. It's such an amazing app and it's got a great brush engine. I think the reason why people love it is because of its simplicity and also its power. And obviously the brush engine allows you to really easily, surprisingly easily customize what you do, how the brushes react. So much so, years ago, I used to sell brushes. If you want those brushes, I'm gonna link them down below for you to grab. They're all calligraphy based brushes, but they work really well. I use Procreate generally for hand lettering. I think hand lettering is best done on this because you can really be artistic with it. You can get different textures and just the way it works on the iPad is just beautiful. If you don't know, the iPad Pro, the newest one with the M4 chip has a new Apple Pencil called the Apple Pencil Pro 2 or something. I think, yeah, the Apple Pencil Pro 2. This has barrel roll, which means that when you use a normal pencil or a quill or something in calligraphy, you can actually change the orientation of that, which is genius. And in Procreate, you can get your brushes to do that. So I've got this Gothic brush that I like to use when I'm lettering or, you know, doing anything. And it's just such a nice feature to have a brush that can move naturally to how it would normally do on paper. So let's move to the less obvious ones, Adobe Fresco. Adobe Fresco is a drawing app by Adobe specifically for the iPad. Now you used to have to pay for Adobe Fresco with a subscription, which sucked. But I believe now, correct me if I'm wrong, it's free. For me, it was just part of my Adobe subscription that I always have for my design work, but now it's completely free. Now why sometimes do I use Fresco over Procreate? The main reason is precision. I'm a logotype designer and I love to be really precise with my designs. I just think Fresco has these tools at the bottom right. They have rulers, circle shape guides, so many different tools. These tools themselves make it so much more easy to be accurately drawing on the iPad, more like a draftman rather than an artist sketch. In fact, I do a lot of my logo type drawing in there because I love the pencil that is just default on there. It just feels really good and feels very much like a pencil. And that really covers what I use Adobe Fresco for. It's just drawing logo types. I then bring it in from Photoshop into my computer to then vectorize and digitize in glyphs. So if you're someone who just wants to get into doing basic animations, drawing and illustration, Fresco is your way to go. And if you're a professional logo designer or someone who wants to get into more accurate drawing, drafting, then Fresco is definitely the app for you. I wanna show you something that I've been working on for about six months with me and my team. It's our brand new Fandabby Dozy website. It is not yet finished, we're about to get there. We're really excited, but this is all built inside a framer. And you can see if I scroll down, we've got lots of interactions here with all our things. This is all custom made. I basically went into a lot of templates, had a look at how they created it, and we created it. And this is the homepage, which is what I'll show you now, but this is gonna be filled with all of our new branding projects. Now, the Framer are sponsoring this video to let you know that they are completely free to start creating websites on, and you need no code. Let me show you. So here I can go to the template section because you don't have to actually make your own website at all, really. You can just customize it from a template that's either free or paid. This was all built inside of Framer with zero coding required. But the best thing about it is that you can actually build your own template or make your website into a template itself. Go ahead, click the link down below, show your support and try it for free. See what you create. So those are the drawing apps that I tend to use. But one thing I'm really surprised at is the ability to be able to design fully vector like you would on a computer inside the iPad with Affinity. Affinity have a few apps. They have Affinity Designer, Affinity Publisher, and Affinity Photo. This is basically a creative suite. Affinity Designer is where you can draw and vectorize illustrations. I've used this and I've got videos about it for designing full logos. In fact, for some client projects, I'm only using my iPad to get from concept to vector straight away, all on this. What I love about Affinity is the fact that it works 
really well natively on the iPad and on the desktop. And I've been using Infinity Designer regularly over the past year, and it's just an amazing app. One thing I love is the touch controls, the gestures. You can use gestures, one, two, three fingers to duplicate, constrain. You can use the Apple Pencil for finesse. It just works really well and it is designed for professionals. This is not just a beginner's app. It really is a fully functioning professional design software. But as well as Affinity Designer to design logos, I love designing posters in Publisher. Affinity Publisher is kind of like Adobe InDesign. This is where you do your word processing. This is where you can publish brochures and things. But I love to use it for a lot of things because they have personas. And these kind of personas allow you to switch between Affinity Designer, Publisher, and Photo, all in the one app, all on the iPad. So if you're working on a poster, but you need a vector graphic and you want to change the way your screen looks, you want to just bring it into a vector graphic space, then you just press designer and you get a whole different tool. You get the shape builder tool, width tools, all these vector graphic tools. But then when you need to edit a photograph, you go to Affinity Photo, you just press it up at the top right and you're straight into photo. You don't have to leave the app which for the iPad, where you don't really wanna be having multiple screens going at the same time, that is insane. And plus, there is no subscription for Affinity Designer version two. So that is something to keep in mind. I've been using this more and more and more. Again, I'll link some videos down below if you wanna see me use it properly for a whole challenge that we did to design a whole brand identity only on the iPad to show you what that's like. Now, there are plenty of other apps that I could use, but I found myself not really using very much. There's one called Notability, which I like because you can just take notes and just transcribe meetings. This is normally where I just need to make a few quick notes and essentially on a class client call, I can just make some notes here and then it will sync up to my computer and I'll have it for later. I think the coolest feature about Notability for me is the fact that you can like select the text that you've written with your hand and it will do its best to generate it in just normal computer text, even with my terrible handwriting, which is something I really like. So that's all I use the iPad Pro for. It seems very basic. I finished nearly everything on my computer. And I think that could be out of habit. I don't think it's because I can't do it all on the iPad. I mean, this thing has got a faster CPU, the M4, than my M3 Mac. It's crazy. I don't do any 3D modeling in this, although I've played around with it. I don't really do much else. I watch videos on it a lot when I'm cooking food. I like to be on calls on it sometimes. But in reality, this thing is basically a glorified drawing pad. It's amazing. So if you're in the market for getting a drawing tablet, I've had a few. I would suggest getting the best iPad you can possible. They do last a long time. I had one for a few years. You don't have to upgrade them. The Apple Pencil Pro is just a must with this iPad. Something this thin and so light that I can just carry around and start drawing wherever I am, taking notes. Something that doesn't take up really any space in my bag. It's just a sliver. It's incredible to have, especially as a designer who works on the go when he travels. So those are the apps that I use on my iPad on a near daily basis. If you enjoyed this type of video, please like, share, sharing is important, and subscribe. I make videos like this every single week. It's all about creativity and graphic design. So if that's your jam, feel free to stick around. Thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. See you soon. Goodbye.